everyone, welcome back again in Feral Killer and Designs YouTube channel. I am very excited for this week's first update. Our first video update will be this lovely black underbus cord project. I've been working on few classical and gothic sets in the last few months, and this one is one of those collection pieces. I still have another underbus cord project from the same collection, and hopefully I can also update that video for our DIY content in the coming days. I'm working on this lovely black fabric, which is detailed with minimal embroidery and few sets of sequins as design. To be honest, I really love this fabric so much. I've made two sets of collection from the same fabric, and those collection pieces will be updated in the future. Without any more delays, we will now start making the cord project. As usual, we will start off by making the skirt part of the whole project first. In here, you can see how wide my standard skirt measures usually is. My skirt measure is usually a fixed 120 inches in width, while the length of this project will only be 21 inches. This cord project will have four lovely black ruffles. These ruffles will add more length and design on the skirt. After you cut your skirt pieces, you will then run the top and the bottom part of the whole panel skirt into the overlock machine. This will clean all the raw edges of the whole skirt. Don't finish the sides of the skirt in this step. These two sides will be done when we finish the whole underbust piece later on. We can then now start gathering the skirt to fit our model's measure. My model's waist measure is 27 inches. I standardly follow this measure for all of my projects, but this measure will will also change if I am customizing a skirt for someone. You will also need to remember to add 2 inches in your actual waist measure. This is our seam allowance and also for our adjustments. Let's now work on the waist bodies of this project. Since the main black fabric I'm working on with this project is too soft, I will need to add a lining fabric for it to hold the shape that you wanted. But this time, instead of using only one layer of lining, I will double this lining to hold the shape of the bodies better. I simply cut the lining material twice with the same fabric, and then I cut the main fabric with the exact same measure. The waist bodies pattern will basically depend on your size. Once you already have all your waist bodies pieces, you will then simply sew the three fabric layers together. I tried my best to sew the panel rectangles as close as possible to the edge. Once you finish at this step, you will then now run the top and the bottom part of the bodies into the overlock machine. We will only need to finish the bottom and the top part of the bodies in this step. Now we can sew the skirt on the waist panel part. I've already marked the center point of the underbust bodies of cam. We can simply fold the skirt in the middle and then match the center point of the skirt to the bodies. Once you have those markings match, you can then start sewing the skirt as it is. I normally start sewing the skirt in the middle so I can fix the gathers as I sew along the skirt. Once you finish attaching the skirt, you can check the seams one final time before running the whole piece for another finishing stitch. This will clean the seam attachments and will strengthen the hold of the skirt to the bodies. We will finish off the bodies by flat stitching the edges toward the waist panel. If you don't want to do it, you are free to skip this process. I'm only doing this step because I wanted to flatten the placement of the gathered part to the waist bodies. I tried to lessen the bulky area in the skirt of this attachment. After that, we can now finish the top part of the bodies. We will be folding 2 inches from the actual length of the waist panel. You can adjust this fold however you like. 
Finish off the process by flat stitching them down in place. After you finish this step, I neatly iron those edges for a crisp fold finish. Next is, we will run the back cross sides of the whole underbust piece into the overlock machine. This is to finish the raw edges of the project. After that, we can now close the back side of the whole piece. Get the two back panels and then sew them together. I'm finishing this step by sewing half an inch from the edge of the whole piece. Once you finish this, you can then now unstitch 12 inches from the top part of the whole bodies. This will be our skirt opening. After you successfully open the seams that we needed, we will then flatten the panels into their designated sides. Again, you are free to skip this step if you like. You can either iron these panels down or simply leave them be. We will now hem the bottom part of the skirt. I will be hemming the skirt by folding the raw edges of the skirt twice. I've mentioned this in my other videos. If your fabric is too light and too delicate, we will need to establish the edges of the skirt to solidify the foundation of the skirt. Doing this will give your ruffles more support once you finish the ruffles layers in place. Now, we can sew the first layer of ruffles on the edge of the skirt. We will sew a total of 4 layers of ruffles for this project. The first 3 layers of ruffles are all in 4 inches length. I started marking 3 inches from the edge of the skirt. Once I finished the markings, I then sew the ruffles in place. I continue to do this process in the rest of the 3 layer ruffles. The last layer of ruffles in this project is a two-layered hem ruffles work which is only 3 inches in length. So I simply mark 2 inches from the third layer ruffles. This step is really one of my all-time favorite steps. Sewing ruffles is really something that I enjoy so much, obviously of course. Let's make the loops for the back part of the skirt. I am folding a 2 inches weak strip cloth and then I flat stitch one side down. Once I've finished this, I will run those row edges into the overlock machine. I did this because I wanted to make sure that the edges of the cloth is sturdy enough to hold the ribbons in place. After that, you will fold the finished edges by half an inch and then we will flat stitch them down. We can now cut those strips into 2 and half inches. You will need at least 4 to 5 stripped up loops for the back part of this project. Mm -hmm. 
mark and measure where you wanted the loops to be sewn. I habitually just place the loops 2 inches from the edge of the back part of the skirt. And once you are done with your markings, you can then now sew the loops in place. Don't forget to cut all the excess materials before you do the folding of the loops. This will lessen the bulkiness of the back part of the skirt. Let's now make the back panel cover for the skirt. I will be cutting a 10 inches length and 8 inches weight panel cloth. After that, I will sew all the sides of the panel piece close, neatly closing all the sides and the edges of the rectangle. After this, you will then turn the whole panel inside out. Make sure to poke all the corners of the panel for a crisp finish. Finish off the back cover by flat stitching all the sides of the whole panel cloth. You can then now sew and attach the panel cover to the back of the dress. I simply made a long ribbon to be used on the back corset closure of the dress. You can use a pre-made long ribbon or just make your own. Making this is fast and easy. Cut a long rectangle cloth. This cloth is around 60 inches in length and 2 inches in width. Fold the cloth into half and then sew along the sides. Don't forget to leave at least 2 inches gap. Once you finish this step, you can then now turn the whole panel strip inside out. Then you will flat stitch all the sides of the ribbon, closing the gap in the process. To finish off the project, I simply added two pairs of gold and black buttons for design. Then, I realized that the buttons are too neat, so I decided to add gold chains to decorate the front bodies. I'm very delighted how clean and neat the front bodies ended up looking. I would have added more gold design in front of the project, but I fear that it will be too much already. Now, I can say that the project is complete. I really hope that you enjoyed this project, since I really did enjoy sewing this and making this under bus dress. I'm still working on the next free dress set for this collection. For now, thank you very much for watching and see you guys really soon. Don't forget to comment and share this video. If you wanted to be updated with our latest content, then you should really click the notification button. And happy sewing everyone! Bye bye!